looking at the life of David. I told you why we started to study David. We, we, we picked it from 1 Chronicles 29, 28. 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 28. It says, now, uh, uh, and he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, he was blessed with longevity, long life. And uh, the Bible says he enjoyed wealth and honor, and he had children to succeed him. You know, the greatest things in life, people don't understand that the greatest thing in life is just four. Number one, you know God. If you don't know God, you are not great. Number two, you enjoy long life. If you die young, it's not good. Number three, you enjoy wealth and honor. That's the third important thing in life. You didn't pass through life as a struggler. And number four, you have children, you know, to, that will continue your legacies after you must have gone. I pray that God will bless every one of us with these four things. Very important. One, what's number one again? You know God. You are born again. You have relationship with God. God knows you. What's number two again? You enjoy long life, longevity. You didn't die young. What's number three? Wealth and honor. And what's number four? You have children to continue your legacies. Now, I also want to encourage every of our workers to attend the second service. The second service too is very important for all our workers to attend. What I'll be sharing in the second service is gateway to two major things. I will tell you. But every one of you must attend the second service as well. So let's continue in our study this morning. We have been looking at virtues in the life of David. Last week, I, saw, I told us that there is nothing you want to enjoy that will not require some things from you. There's a price for everything. Remember I taught you that. And last week, we saw two things in the life of David. In the first service, we took our time to study his life, and we discovered that David was a man of gratitude. He was a thanksgiver. And I told us from scriptures that if you are a thanksgiver, you will enjoy favor from God. If you know how to thank God for everything, in fact, you thank God for what is not enough. If you, are, if you have this heart of gratitude, you will enjoy continuous favor from God. And I told you, in this life, anything you open your eyes to try to be looking at is what you'll be seeing consistently. If you are always looking at the things that God has not done, you will see plenty. But if you make up your mind that you always be seeing the good things that God has done, you'll be full of thanksgiving and you'll continue to see more. Then in the second service, we saw that David was a man of forgiving heart. He has a forgiveness heart. Now, that's why I said from scriptures, it is clear, forgive us our trespass as we forgive the trespass of those that trespass against us, which means that forgiveness is gateway to God's mercy. Now, don't forget, thanksgiving is gateway to God's favor. Forgiveness is gateway to what? God's mercy. If you don't forgive people, forget. God cannot forgive you. It is clear in the scriptures. That was what we saw last week Sunday. Now, today we are looking at another thing. In this service, we are looking at David as a honest man. David was a very honest man in his days on earth. David was a very honest man. Now, those of you behind the, screen, uh, the media, as I call scriptures, we have a lot to read. You begin to bring them out. David was a very honest man in his days on earth. Very, very honest. Very, very honest. Listen, I'm going to show you one after the other. Number one, when he served his father as a shepherd. Don't forget, David's service, service profile started from his service as a shepherd. 1 Samuel chapter 16, 11 and 12. His father was so sure when prophet Samuel came to their house. Ah, Samuel said, bring all your sons. All of them were coming, one after the other. And Samuel said, Is this, are these all your sons? I read on. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There, he now answered, there is still the youngest. Jesse answered, but he's tending the sheep. Now, this is my son. The only place where you can find him now, I've put him in charge of the sheep. He's tending the sheep. But he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. His father was prou proud enough to say, this is where you will meet my son. And look at what happened. So he sent and had him brought in. Can you see? Very honest. His father said, right now he's with the sheep. That's what I've committed to his hand. And when they got there, where did they find him? They found him with the sheep. 
David was a very honest man. Now, if he was a dishonest man, he would have to told his dad, Daddy, I'm going to be with the sheep, oh, but you will have gone somewhere else. So when they will be saying, when someone will be saying, you know what, we are not going to sit down until he comes back, they will have just been standing and standing and standing without seeing him. David was a very honest man. So the Bible says he was brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance, handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So when he was serving as a shepherd, very honest. Look at the next one. When he served, he served King Saul as an instrumentalist in 1 Samuel 16, 18 to 23. After he was a shepherd, he now served in the palace as an instrumentalist. The man that will always come to play the strings. You know, look at how, let's look at the, what the Bible says about him. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks, uh, where am I? He speaks well and is a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. Next verse. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David. Who is with the sheep? Aha. Uh -huh. Let's go on, let's go on. I don't have all the time. Who is with the sheep? So Jesse took out the donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them unto him. Unto, oh, sorry, with his son, David, to King Saul. He sent them with his son to King Saul. David came to Saul and entered the service. Saul liked him. Can you see? If he was not honest, Saul would not like him. The Bible did not say, and David, and David came to Saul and Saul liked him. No. The Bible says, after he entered the service of Saul, which means after he kept on rendering his service, if people don't like you where you are working, check your service. I come again. If people don't like you where you are working, check your service. I always tell people. Now, the issue of demon is small. If you can bind them, they are bind. You can bind them. But why will you be saying, I know they don't like me. Why will they like you? What will make them like you? It's your service. David came to Saul and entered the service. Saul liked him very much. Not even like a load. Very much. And David became one of his armor bearer. He was now promoted from instrumentalist to become one of those that carry his armor. Say honesty. David was a very honest man. Verse 23. That's the last verse we are reading there. Verse 23. Verse 23. David was a very honest man. And so it was, whenever the Spirit of God came upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Can you be very honest? You know, some people else will have taken advantage of, ah, whenever my, father, my old guy is insane, he does not know the amount of money in his pocket. Let me dip his, my hand into his pocket and take some money. I remember the last, uh, no, not the last, one of my stepbrothers, when my dad was here alive, you know, uh, they used to say, uh, you know, my dad was strong, sick, you know, and he used to put money in his, uh, inside his pocket to sleep. He now told his son, whenever he wants to eat, uh, he wants to sleep, the drugs that they say, his blood pressure drugs, uh, uh, he tell the, the, that's my stepbrother to give him. My dad did not know that my stepbrother changed the blood pressure drugs to sleeping drugs. So my dad would say he doesn't understand what is happening. That he will sleep and sleep. Even when you are talking to him, he has gone. And he said when he put money in his pocket, by the time he wake up in the morning, they are no longer there. And being a retired soldier, he now decided, he said one day, he decided that today, this drug, if he give me, I will pretend as if I, I'm, I'm going to take it. So as my stepbrother gave him the drug, my dad pretended to do like this and drank water and went to bed. Now, as usual, money in his pocket, this young boy woke up again, went to dip his hand into my dad's pocket. Rita Suya. <laughs> as he put his hand in his pocket, my dad said he grabbed his hand and said, so you are the thief. You know, David would have taken advantage if he was not a honest person to rob Saul because anytime he loses his sanity, he doesn't think straight. But David was a honest man. Let's move on. When he served, even in the army, when he served in the army of Israel, he was also honest. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. When he served in the army, he was also very honest. Give us that. 1 Samuel 18 and verse 5. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war 
and it was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of all of, of Saul's servants. Can you imagine? Anywhere they sent him, he behaved himself wisely. He came back with results. The Bible says he was promoted and everybody celebrated him. Everybody liked him. All the people liked him in the army. Everybody even in Saul's house liked him. But David did not because of that declare himself king. Do you know what is happening today? We have so many churches today of pastors that God didn't call. Maybe they are past senior pastor. We send them, go and pray for that person. Go and pray for that person for me. I am so busy. Go and pray for that person. And because people are sharing testimony, ah, you prayed for me. You healed me. Ah, miracle happened. The next thing, they go and start a church. Miracle evangelical church. Now, David did not do that. He stood by the assignment. Let me tell your neighbor, say honesty. David was a very honest man. Let's see the last one again. In fact, when the women sang his praise, he didn't capitalize on it to steal the throne. First Samuel 18, 7, to 8, 7 and 8, when the women sang his praise, he didn't capitalize on it to steal the throne. When the women were singing his praise, so the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is tens of thousands. Imagine when people are saying, ah, ah, it's like you are more anointed by our, than our senior pastor. Ah, in fact, you, are, you get anointing, pass, pass, pass pastor self. So the women sang. Show me verse 8. The women sang. They sang his praise. David didn't capitalize on that. Then Saul was very angry. It was Saul that was angry. And the saints displeased him. And they said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me, they have ascribed only thousands. Now, what more can they can he have but the kingdom? Who was the one thinking? It was not even David. David did not even remember that anybody sang for him. Listen, this morning, the Lord has led me to teach you. Honesty is the gateway to a lifestyle of honor. Honesty is the gateway to a lifestyle of honor. Write it down like that. Honesty is the gateway. Ishotito uni honor. To yorisi ola. Honesty is the gateway to a lifestyle of honor. Look at all the tests that, 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 that David went through. Can they praise you like that? For instance, you are working under a boss and your boss will send you to go and attend to a client and the client is telling you, maybe I should not even call your boss. You know what? Don't tell your boss that I want you to come tomorrow or come on Sunday when you don't go to work. Don't do that. So many people think that it's a shortcut. You know, it's a way to greatness. And you know, I can be making private money. I will show you the, the disadvantage of uh, dishonesty as I go on. Hallelujah. Are you learning at all? I didn't hear you. You can do better. Listen, I wrote here, David was a very honest servant. It is your honest, it is your manner of, of service that determines the outcome of your life. Your manner of service is what determines the outcome of your life. Honesty is all about being truthful. What does it mean to be honest? Honesty is all about what? Being truthful. About what is expected of you. I went one day to buy petrol in a station. And as I got there, I said, please, I put a keg. Put foil of 800 naira here. By the time they sold 700 and uh, 749, it was full. The man now said, uh-uh, you've been using this keg to buy it under. I said, yes. He said, definitely, the meters of those people are bad. You know, I met that, that petrol station on, on Akala Road. So I now decided I was going home after service on Sunday. I wanted to put fuel in my tank in the car and get more fuel in the keg. I drove to Akala Road, that same petrol station, in the afternoon. I now brought the keg. I said, okay, sell for me 800 to test them again. Beloved, it was going to 900. The keg didn't fool. It was going to 900. I, I said, stop. Stop. By the time they were fooling it, almost 900. I said, I came here this morning. It was 749. Why is it 900 now? Now. I said, I want to see your manager. I started making it. I want to see your manager. I won't pay this money. By the time I got inside... The manager was not there. They called the manager. The manager said, uh, tell him to pay any amount he has. Honesty. Honesty is all about being truthful. And I told myself that day, I told them there, I won't come here again. Honesty is all about being truthful. Say it after me. Honesty is all about being truthful about what is expected of you. 
Listen, someone, a honest person is someone who is not given to swindling, lying, or fraud. Anyone that does not look at how to ma you know, manipulate people is a honest person. Anyone that does not want to commit fraud is a honest person. Any person that will say, no, 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 I don't want to lie. I'm not giving to lying. And these are things, virtues that so many church people have forgotten. Some churches are not even preaching it again. In fact, some people believe that, uh, uh, you know what they say now? They say, uh, if you don't use your brain, you go, so, you go so far. Don't use your, that, the, lying is not using of brain. Lying is a sin. The Bible says, all liars shall do what? Shall have their part in the burning lake of fire. All liars. Either white, blue, green, or red lie. Lie is lie. Hallelujah. Talk to me, hallelujah. So someone, you know, look at it. Someone whose words you can count on is a honest person. Someone whose words you can count on. Not a multi-faced person. Who is an honest person? Somebody will tell you, meet me by 12. And by 12 is there. Now, and if he's going to change that by 12, he will call you to tell you reasons why. That's a honest person. Somebody that you agree over a deal and you are not afraid. Okay, I'm going to buy this thing for 10000 and you are not afraid. It's not that you say, okay, you know what? B borrow me that money. Borrow me 50000 Don't worry, by next week I will give you. A honest person, that next week, even if he cannot meet up, he will call you ahead. I'm sorry. Please, the way I'm looking at it, today is Sunday. I promise Monday that I'm going to pay. But the way I'm looking at it today, I don't think he's going to work tomorrow. Please, can you give me some days? Not someone that will say, after all, will he kill me? You know, go kill me. Like if I say I no get, I no get with that. Money, money, money we no day. Jedi, Jedi, no fi collect them. That's not a honest person. Honesty is the gateway to a life of honor. David was a honest man. Quickly, let's go deeper. When you are honest, what will you stand to gain from it? When you are honest, what will you stand to gain? Four things you will gain when you decide to be honest. Four things you will gain. When you decide to be honest, when you are honest, what will you gain? What will you stand to gain? People don't understand that honesty has gains. Think about shoot it all. Honesty has gains. I'll tell you four. Then I'll see if I can summarize the message. Number one, the wicked, the devil, will not find any fruit to harvest from your life in the future. The wicked, put comma, the devil will not find any fruit to harvest from your life in the future. Now, let me tell you this quickly. People don't understand that life is a field. Our attitude is a seed. It determines the kind of harvest we get from life. Should I come again? Life eh, that you see is a field. It's like the ground. Our character it's like the seed that we plant on the ground. It is our attitude, our character that determines what we harvest in the future. Do you know that some of us, the way we are living our life, the devil has fruits to come and harvest in our lives in the future. Anybody that does not plant the seed of rebellion, hear me, can never reap the harvest of wickedness. What you do today is a seed for tomorrow. Whether you like it or not, you can't pray against the harvest for the seed you planted. It's like somebody went to this garden now, like in my garden, uh, you know, I have what they call sour soap. I didn't know the name of that fruit until when I started seeing it growing. I planted it about two years ago. And when they were planting, it was it's an agric one. The person was saying to me, Pastor, in two and a half years, you'll be eating sour soap. So last week we went to the garden and we saw very, very big ones. They are becoming big. That's what we planted. Can you imagine if I now take anointing oil? Hmm? Take anointing oil and go to the tree of sour soap and I'm praying. In the name of Jesus, become mango. Mango, mango, mango. Man. See, even if I add fasting, it go change. It no go change. Or did she? It no go happen. You know why? We planted sour soap fruit. If you are planting dishonest seed, you, you will reap this dishonest harvest. If you cheat somebody to rise, whether you fast and pray or not, when you rise, they will cheat you too. Understand that is a law of life. It's a law of life. And where did that law come from? It came from Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. 
after God received the, the, the sacrifice of Noah, he said, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest time will never cease. It's a law. So what do you stand to gain when you refuse, when, I mean, when you walk in dishonesty? I'm sorry, when will you start, what will you stand to gain when you walk in honest ways? The wicked, the devil, will not find any fruit to harvest from your life. There will be nothing that the wicked wants to come and harvest. You will not be afraid of the future. I always tell my pastors, one of, one of them is pastoring a level church now. One of them is pastoring a Yegun church now. I don't think I've gone to that Yegun church for almost one year. I used to tell them, you can't break the church. Do you know why? I didn't break any church to start this church. My hands are clean. And whatsoever I didn't plant, I cannot reap. Now, can I now go to my sour soap tree now and be expecting banana? It's not possible. I'll be waiting for sour soap to get fried and be ready to drop for me to harvest. So, you, do, you won't, when others are praying, ah, every evil seed in my future, you don't need that prayer. You know why you don't need it? You didn't plant the seed. You can't, you can't reap the harvest. The wicked, the devil, will not find any fruit to harvest from your life in the future. Now, since you didn't plant the seed of unfaithfulness, you won't reap the harvest of destruction. Please help me high pitch, Brother Precious. Since you, did not, uh, uh, since you didn't plant the seed of unfruitfulness, you won't reap the harvest of destruction. John chapter 14, verse 30. Show me on screen. Since you, since, uh, you didn't plant the seed of unf unfaithfulness, you won't reap the harvest of destruction. You didn't plant the seed of unfaithfulness, you won't reap the harvest of destruction. I read, this is Jesus. He said, I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of the world is coming. That's the devil is coming. He says, and he has what? Nothing in me. He has nothing. He has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. The ruler of this world is coming. He has nothing in me. Now that's why when we are telling you to be honest, eh, we are telling you to be honest because of the future. Because if you are sowing dishonesty now, you will reap it in the future. That's why if you look at, throughout the, the reign of David, there was nobody that came up to say, I want to take the throne from David. Because David did not kill Saul. In the days when Saul was even in his hands. Nobody will kill him too. As king. Am I communicating? Are you sure you are learning? Do you know that the future is the time of harvest. You can't stop it from coming. The future is the time of harvest. You can't stop it from coming. Proverbs 11, 13 and Proverbs 20, verse 7. The future is the time of harvest. You can never stop it. You now begin to pray. Let this future not come. It will come. So honesty, you will reap honesty as well. I'm telling you. One of the things working for me today are the seeds I've sown in the past. Somebody gave me a gift on Friday. Very, very precious gift. As he walked in, he put the gift on my table. I was just at the entrance of the church, seated there. He put the gift on my table, and he brought two men. And all, the two of them knelt down. You know what he said? He said, this is the pastor that trained me over 23 years ago. All that I am today as a result of the teachings he gave us 23 years ago. He's no, he's no longer over here. He doesn't really worship here. They left church about, uh, about, let's say, about, let's say, about 18 years ago. But he came back, put a big gift on my table. And I thank God, that Lord, thank you, that I was not a 419 pastor. Because if I reap 419, uh, if I sow 419 seed, I will reap 419 members. You know there are 419 members? Members that when you send them fuel, buy fuel in the generator, Buy fuel of 4,000, they will buy 2,000. You know there are members like that. Members that will carry church speaker and begin to sell them one by one. Pastor will just come on Sunday morning and say, I love to, to, praise God. And one speaker like that, we didn't see it. It's maybe, go and check, go and ask the pastor. How did he serve? What did he do to come up? Let's go on. Where are those scriptures? Those scriptures. Some, uh, Proverbs 11:13. And Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. Look at that. Proverbs 11, 13. A tale bearer reveals secret, but he 
He who is a faithful spirit. Who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Check, show me 20 verse 7. 27. Faithful spirit. Maybe it's the faithfulness that made me choose that scripture. The righteous man, I love this, walk in his what? Integrity. His children are blessed after him. He didn't leave causes behind for his children. Why? Because he walks in integrity. There will be nothing in the future that the devil is coming to pay back to you. Walk honestly. Let's take number two. Because of my time. Number two. When, when, you, when you are honest, we are looking at what you stand to gain. Number two. It attracts great opportunities from God. It attracts great opportunities from God. Listen. When God can trust you, he will put great opportunities in your care. People don't know that when you are honest, God will trust you. And when God trusts you, he will give you opportunities. Doors of opportunity. Because he knows you won't mess it up. It is not how loud we pray that makes our prayer answer. Eh? It is how honest we live. How honest we live. The car we are riding right now. I and my wife, we were just going home that day now. We were going to do a project at a level. wanted to come back. We saw it on the road. And my wife said, ah, and this car is nice. Oh. We called the wife of the person. We love this car. The person came to my office and said, Pastor, do you like this car? Yes. We agreed on a price. And the next thing I saw, he just came and parked the car. I said, sir, why? He said, man of God. Man of God. I love you. Man of God. Man of God. If not that, the way things are, I will have dashed you this car. Whatever way you want to pay, just we can talk on phone. He dropped the car even when I had not paid one naira. God will open opportunities for you if you are honest. Do you think God will introduce you to somebody that you go and disgrace him? He won't. Because he knows that if he takes you there, he will, he will disgrace him. There's this pastor, I don't want to call him my friend. We, I, I met him again. The last time I saw him was so long ago. I met him again two weeks ago. This pastor had an opportunity. The chief judge of Osho State, those years, saw him preaching somewhere and said, man of God, please come to my house. Come and pray and bless my family. Now, if you understand who a judge is, they don't go to functions. They don't go to functions. Though. It's part of their ethics. You won't see them in any party. If they are going to come for your occasion, you will have a special room for them. They don't see them in public. They have all the officers that watch over them. They live like presidents. So this pastor now went to pray over the judge and the family. And he stole their gold. <laughs> yeah. They finished prayer. Pastor left. They gave him good money. Then the woman started looking for the gold. One of her, you know, precious jewelry. It's a gold. They look for it, look for it. Then they ask, ma, you know, being a judge, it is lawyers that are promoted that are becomes your. Being a judge, in, very intelligent. They just study psychology. Who do you suspect? They said, the only person that have come into this house is this man of God. Do you know from Oshun State, they traced this man of God to Kebola. They found him with the gold. They now handcuff him. That was the last opportunity that man of God got at the high level. Do you know why? He disappointed God. The gateway to receiving opportunities from God is when you are honest. Be honest, I'm telling you. You will see how God will bring deals to you. When I told the person, how I'm going to pay for the car, I told him where I'm going to pay. We agreed. I made my first installment after. After some time, when the time for the second one came, I sent it to him. The third time was coming, and I saw that there was no how I could meet up to the third one. I called him a week before and demanded for one month extra. He said, but that day has not come, Pastor. I said, the way I'm looking at it, it may not happen. Please, can we make it one month extra? He said, sir, if I look at the first two payments, you were able to meet up. So don't worry. You can pay it a month after. That one month, before that one month, I'd gathered it, I gave him. 
He now told me, any time you need a car again, he has several cars, please call me. I will attend to you. God will not be able to trust you with opportunities if you are not honest. If, if God knows that, God knows that if he introduce you to somebody's daughter, you will sleep with the person's daughter when you are a married man. He will introduce you. And that person may be the one that will need to sign your promotion. God knows that, ah, this one, this one, if I give them opportunity, no, someone will say, please, can you please hold this money from me? When it is time to collect, police will intervene. intervene. He won't, get, you know. Hello? Answer me now. Help me ask your neighbor, can God trust you? Listen, this was the test that even Joseph passed that made God to promote him. You know, you know what he said to Potiphar, Potiphar's wife? He said, Madam, this one that you say I should have sex with you, you know my ogre has put everything in my care. The only thing that God did, that God did not put in my care is you, ma, because you are his wife. I will not do this thing eh, and sin against God. Can God trust you? Now look at why God trusted David. Psalm 78. 70 to 72. How David won the trust of God. Psalm 78 from verse 70 to 72. Some people it is your character, dishonest character that has not allowed you to receive opportunities from God. Let's go on. The Bible says he also chose David his servant. Look, follow this scripture. He took him from where? From the sheep folds. Yes. Next verse. 71 and 72. From following the eels that had young, he brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people, and Israel his inheritance. You know, God was looking at the way he was shepherding the sheep of his father. God was looking at him. God now said, this man has passed my test. He now made him to lead Israel. Now look at 72. Look at how he led. The Bible says he shepherded them according to what? The integrity of heart. What is integrity? Truthfulness. He shepherded them by the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. You know this area of skill is what I'm trusting God to help work on our leader, our head of the, our departments. Let me just branch. I discovered that our, some of you people are good, but you are not skillful. Every, every aspect of our church, the only thing that is lacking is skill. Now, what is skill? To do things in an extraordinary way. Our ushers have been doing worship the same way. Our praise leaders have been leading praise the same way. Our instrumentalists have been playing instrument the same way. Now, it is skill that makes what you do to be different. That we are going to come in a, in a different way today. I recorded some songs. I will give it to Mommy Ewa. Now, it's just one special number, but eight people, the way they came, the way the choir came to the altar, I, I, OTM, I win, Lori. I will give you. So, skill is what attracts. Now, let's go back to our teaching. The integrity of heart. Are you honest? Make up your mind. I will be a very honest husband. I took, like, right from the ask, this is my wife. I made up my mind from before I got married. My marriage is 20 years. I will be a honest husband. No girlfriend. And there is no lady that can say, this is my favorite. No, I don't have any favorite anywhere. These 20 years of my marriage, you find me in that in, that in church, at home, with my wife in a, in, in a shop, or anywhere. These three places, that's where you find. You can't say, ask my wife, uh, where is your husband? He said, I don't even know where I carry head go. And the same thing too, ask my wife. Those are the places you see her. If she's not in church, she'll be at home with me. If she's not at home with me, she's on an assignment that I'm aware of. Integrity of heart. If God cannot trust you, he cannot give you opportunities. Here. Are you blessed? Can you see that God that it is God that puts people in position? Oh no, 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 no. 
It's God that puts people in position. If they cannot trust you, he cannot put you in position. Let's rush through. Number three. Number three. What's the third thing we are looking at? What you are, sorry, when you are honest, what will you stand to gain? That's the question we are answering. Number three. People will feel comfortable around you. People will feel comfortable around you even with all that they have. People will feel comfortable around you even with all they have. They will not be saying, hey, move phone on you, take your phone, take your phone, take your phone. You know when they are about to share testimony of a miracle, finance, when they see that you are coming, they keep quiet. Don't, don't, don't mention. If you tell pastor now that they don't promote me, they don't increase my salary, you go ask for seed on Sunday. I will never be that kind of a pastor. You yourself know that since when we started God's House Project, we don't put body on you anymore. We don't ask for any other extra thing. In that God's House Project now, we have almost 1.5 million in that account. In that particular project. Now, we are doing projects at a level, if you go there now, people are working at a level, it's not from God's House Project, you and we didn't mention anything here that, uh, please, we need money to... Project is on. Some of you don't know that you are the reason why some people cannot trust you. Why, why they cannot share testimony in your presence. If you are not honest, people will not feel comfortable around you. They'll be careful with you. Listen. Honesty will always attract people to you. Honesty will always attract people to you. I've told you there are so many rich people. One of them was talking to me on Sunday. One of the rich people I know was talking to me on Sunday. Pastor, have you gotten the land for God's house project? I said, no. He said, why not go? Listen, he said, why not go look for the land? How much is the money? I can talk to one of my friends. They will buy it for the church. And because I know you, the church will agree with us on how it will be paying it back. Just this last Sunday. And I said, okay, I'll do that. I'll look for some, a, a property where I'll, I'll get back to you. I've not gotten back to now. Honesty attracts good people around you. You don't see every, every opportunity you have with rich people as a time to talk about your need. You're always sending a sending message. Please, I'm broke. Nobody wants to have a broke friend, though. And so, he, I, I, am I communicating? Nobody wants to have a broke friend. When they see your call, <laughs> leave, leave it. Be honest. You will see that people will be comfortable around you. People will be able to even come to your business place and look at you and say, ah, you don't have enough goods. Can I supply you? Can I supply you? If some of you are like me, eh, somebody like our deacon will have left church. He works in a bank. We use facility from their bank. And we've been using facilities from their bank over 10 to 12 years. If I'm not exaggerating. And we've never defaulted for once. I've never called him say, deacon. You know you are my deacon. Say, yes, sir. You know I'm your father in the Lord. Yes, sir. I speak as your father in the Lord. See, that money, go and pay it. And God will bless you. Ah, you think it doesn't happen? It's happening. I've counseled so many members. If I tell you what so many of their pastors have done to them, you'll be shocked. If you like it, eh, that's me. If I'm using Beatles and you are using uh, 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 Lexus, I will still bless your car with all joy and celebrate you and not ask you to remember me oh. because no man has the capacity to remember anybody. No man has what it takes to change your life except God touch him and decide to use him for you. That's my understanding about life. Tell your neighbor, be honest. Now, how do I know this? Look at 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 6. 1 Samuel 9, 6. Do you know I discovered this? That even the thief like honest people. I don't know whether you have noticed it. 
A thief will want a honest accountant. Only, only. And to Jali. Someone tell him, Akufu. Ah, boy, ah, trust me. Ma, So the vacancy at the top is for honest people. I've been, a, I'm a pastor to so many people that are not members of this church. So many people on the internet that trust the integrity of God's grace upon my life. Now I read. No, 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 no. First Samuel chapter, is it 9, 6? Oh God, I, I missed it in my study. I wrote, maybe I wrote the wrong scripture down. Now where I was bringing, I wanted to bring out to you, it, uh, was where the Bible says the, the servant that followed uh, um, um, Saul said, there is a man of God in this city is a honorable man. Whatsoever he says, come to pass. They were talking about Samuel. Let's go see him. Honesty attracts people to you. When people can't trust you, they won't introduce their big opportunities to you. For instance, somebody has a job. He's the one that collected the contract, but doesn't know how to do it. And he knows that you can do it. If he can't trust you, he won't give you. If he can't trust you, he won't tell you, I follow me, go and defend that contract for me. One of the reasons why several, several children of God are not prospering, can I tell you, is that we like going behind people. And You will see some unbelievers. They are not the owner of the job. They will come to the job and they won't talk with you. No matter what you try to say, they say, own the color girl, and Tony can be color girl, but to look bashe. But dishonest person, a corner pay oya, while about me she share me right at it by customer and go to the dishonesty. Could that number four quickly? Number four, what you are, what sorry, when you are honest, we are still asking the question when you are honest, what will you stand to gain? Number four, it will preserve your name. Honesty will preserve your name. Honesty will preserve your name. When Prophet Samuel was giving his retirement speech, look at what he said. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 12, 2 to 5. Honesty will preserve your name. When they mention your name, what crosses people's mind? Honesty will preserve your name. I thank God. By the grace of God, I have been able to maintain the integrity of their Afolabis. A lot of people know, know my dad. When my dad died, one of the command, their commandants in the Nigerian Legion, the man came. He said, Afolabi, we know him for one thing, for his loyalty. If he decides to be your assistant, he will be your assistant for life. Baba, he doesn't used to do like this. Now look at this. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks. Where am I? Ah. Why am I writing on this? Show me verse 2. Is this verse 2? Ah, please look for it for me. It's like I still jump it again. Look for it for me. Now, the Bible in that scripture, they'll get it for me out. Somewhere I had to ask them, whose lamb did I take? Did I take anybody's lamb? They said no. Which, whose oxen did I take? Did I take anybody's oxen? They said no. Whom have I defrauded? Did I defraud anybody? They said no. Did you know that he was bold enough? Honesty is the best way to preserve your name. Why do you think up till tomorrow, anywhere they mention Wale Shoyinka, people bow. Be honest. Make up your mind. I know it's not easy in a corrupt world, but be, make up your mind to be honest. Why did the sons of Samuel not be, continue? Why did they lose the throne of priesthood? Because they were not honest. Their father was honest. So the people gathered together and said, let's go and tell Samuel we can't continue with his sons. We can't continue with his sons. That was why they needed a new king. They needed a king Saul. First Samuel 12. Eh? Where did you get the first one you read? Now look at it. He said, here am I. 
witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? Or from whose hands have I received any bribe? With which to blind my eyes. I will restore it to you now. If that person comes out. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. We are going to stop at verse 5. And they said, you have not cheated us or oppressed us. Nor have you taken anything from any man's hands. This Samuel, then he said to them, the Lord is witness against you. And his anointed is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. And they answered, he is witness. So what is the fourth thing that honesty will do? It will preserve your name. These 26 years that I've been a pastor, I always thank God for it. That thank you, Lord, for the name. Thank you that there is nothing anywhere, anything anybody can say to say, ah, that pastor for Labi, or go on the internet. We are going, you know, I, I, I preached on radio some time ago, and uh, somebody sent me a message. I am hungry, pastor, please, I need food. I was laughing because the person didn't know how much I paid to be on radio. So he now called me the second day. I was preaching online. And I was cutting it. You know what he did? He now sent a message. He said, so you put my, my phone on blacklist. I will blackmail you. I will spoil your name all over the place. I will let everybody know that you are not a man of God. I just typed, typed the message and sent to him, go ahead, please. Because I'm not afraid. Why do people walk in dishonesty? Let's look at that. Why do people walk in dishonest ways? Even when they are aware of the benefits that honesty, that honest people enjoy. Why do people walk in dishonest ways? Even when they are aware of the benefits honest people enjoy. Write your questions properly. You know why I always encourage you to write? Your message book is in one way or the other a source of evangelism. Somebody will read it one day. Why do people walk in dishonest ways even when they are aware of the benefits honest people enjoy? One, it's only one I will tell you. They know that honest ways take a longer time to bring result. They know the honest ways takes a longer time to bring result. One more question to Baron in the note it all, eh? Uma Pekoto Jem Loto then. So since they know that honesty takes longer time, they feel they can't wait for the proper process of time. They want to arrive quicker than usual. So they decide not to pay attention. To the consequences. They decide not to pay attention. They are saying, no, no. You know, I was telling my wife uh, uh, last week, I was driving from Challenge, coming, and this man, he, instead of him to go around that uh, roundabout, uh, what was the name of that roundabout before you get to Challenge? Um, Efusheton. Is it Efusheton? The one before Challenge. Amphani, yes. Instead of him to go around the roundabout, he just decided to go through the corner of the road. As he wanted to turn, yes, who came? They blocked him in front, blocked him at the back. He now started speaking English. Look at that. He couldn't wait. He decided to go through shortcuts. Shortcuts, we always cut short. If you lose your name, you can't get it back. Oh. You must understand that. Tashiri Bafil a lot too. Yes, yes, dishonesty is fast. But the consequence is great. That's one, that's one, of, one of the reasons why they don't want to wait, pass through the normal process. is because they feel that, ah, it's slow. It's slow. 
And I must tell you the truth, it is slow. But, you know, if you are slow and you are moving and you don't have any consequence, is it not better than running too fast that you know that consequences are waiting for you ahead? Anytime my children were sick in those days, I don't used to be afraid. You know why? I didn't collect any, I didn't go to ask the devil for any child. He can't take from me what he didn't give me. They've gone through some t- serious sickness that, ah, I remember Eniola when she was very, very small. She was just losing blood. We rushed her to the hospital. They didn't know what to do. That was a, a what's the name of that hospital? That Catholic hospital, only you that time. But do you know that I was also sick in the house? The second day morning we got there, this girl was okay. I, I think she was about four or five years old that time. Ma, going to be four. And she said, you know what she said? She said, she saw that man that we used to watch in film. That he said his name is Jesus. He came to meet me yesterday night. He now touched me. Yes, he now touched me. He now tell me that I will not die. I will be okay. Do you know that the second day morning, one very old man, doctor, came at Uluyoro. They said he used to come once a while for world round. And they have slated my daughter. If Sarah, uh, how many pints of blood she will take and things like that. The doctor got to her bed and checked and said, this girl should be discharged this morning. They said we rushed her here yesterday. The blood, the blood was extremely, the PCV was extremely low. But Jesus came overnight. That's why at times when she sings uh, all this hip-hop, now you should tell her, hey, Jesus have his hand on you. If you don't want to release yourself by release, it may take you by force. Short court will always cut short. Quickly, let's summarize. We have taken our time. Let me give, just give me three minutes more. Now, if I have decided to walk in, sorry, if I have decided to walk honestly, how will I do it? And when will I start? If I have decided to walk honestly, how will I do it? And when will I start? A, start now. Make up your mind. Start now. B, allow the Holy Spirit to help you. Always pray for grace. Help me, Lord, to live a truthful life. Be praying for more of His grace. C, determine Be determined never to compromise. Make up your mind that you will not compromise. And D, follow the process of God's timing. Are you blessed? I didn't hear you. Maybe you are angry too. You like dishonesty? Make up your mind to be honest. Are you blessed this morning? Have you learned something? Say after me, I've made up my mind. To walk in honesty and truth. In the name of Jesus. Now rise up.